Welcome back to our deep dive into Heaven's Vault. You'll be happy to know that I did my sneezing off camera. Woohoo! Let's see whether or not I can continue to not sneeze into the mic. Over here on the right, you can see something that's a real pet peeve. I don't like that. That's fine, though. It's forgivable to use punctuation that I'm not a fan of. So welcome back. We are near a a culmination here in the game. We are we are in a place that we have never seen, that we think is a, a, an ancient vault for the seventh god, the god of death, the god of eating the stars. What was that? I heard a noise. I don't think you could hear it because I've got the sound turned down a little bit much, but it sounded like wind and a glimmering. And for some reason, I think that that statue said something when we walked up to it. Unfortunately for us, um, so something is talking. It is that statue. Oh, Inca has been here before. As Enkai or as a robot? Mmm. So this dark little stand features... Um, it's hard to see. I'm leaning in towards the screen so I can try and see it. I'm playing this in the middle of the sunniest day we've had all year. I can't see anything. Let me draw the blinds a little bit. Um, it looks like one of those vaulting horses uh, that, um, uh, that people, you know, that children use. Except it's got like one of those um, you know those toys that Japanese children use that they whip back and forth in two little balls well, that's not Japanese that's is that Japanese you know the, the, the one where you it's like a drum where you whip it back and forth um, I'm thinking of the the toy where you where you put the ball on top of the hammer um, that's Japanese I think this one's it doesn't matter I'm just making conversation so over here we've got a cool little drop. Now my character is walking a little strange. Okay, so as I walk past these, they all have things to say. And there's always a little chimey humming noise. So chances are I'm supposed to walk past all of them. Um, those, these, these empty and full pinned, um, th these empty and full pinions have random things on them. Who knows what they are? But I don't know anything about the, uh, the audio linguistics of the ancient language. All I know is the symbols, so there's no chance of me interpreting, um, interpreting that. Katang kiss orisi baskunkwa. It's also go too fast. Oh! Oh, it's making the it's making the walkways transition. I see. Are they? I think that what what's happening here is that I'm walking in the wrong direction, and they're they're keeping me from going down. Question mark. Hey there, Mr. Robot. No, nothing. So here we're gonna watch this person, Iquimori Cat and vanishes and appears. Oh, back there. Maybe we can reach it. It's all ass. Yeah, it is this way. If you can get on it before it... I can't. You're too slow, Aaliyah. That's fine. And even in the end of the game, there are puzzles. But here's the problem. When you have a game with these kind of what I call pacing puzzles. Pacing puzzles are puzzles where any player can solve them. It doesn't, it doesn't require any real brain action. It just requires you to go to the right place and click at the right time. Um, and pacing puzzles are great as a pacing mechanic within a game like this. Because it makes sure that the player is paying attention to the world and paying attention to everything that's happening. Um, but when you're in an epic moment like this one, 
it would make more sense for the puzzles to reflect the 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 wonder and the personal journey of this particular sequence. So for example, if we knew that these could be crossed, but we would never be able to cross them back, that would resonate pretty well with the idea that there is no longer any going back. We can't go back up the river, and we can't even go back up to the surface of the moon. We are being consumed by this ancient tentacle god. That would be something um, that I think would, would help to play up the themes that we're trying to have. And when you can play up those themes, and we're not talking about amazing, you know, man versus nature or whatever. We're talking about just basic things like we are stuck here. We're going one way. We can't go back. That's a theme. And playing that up by having the puzzles amp that up would be hugely advantageous. So when you're thinking about pacing puzzles, Keep in mind that the pacing serves a point, and normally it serves whatever the theme of the world is. If the world is about being, you know, a, a watery plant farm, then the puzzles should be about plants and growth and pigs and water. Um, and when they're when you're out here in one-way techno wonderland, they should all be about going one way and not being able to escape. Yeah, I see an eye. What do you see? It's clearly a teleporter. Well, we know what Micus means. Micus means superior. Oh, she's lost it. She's now robot um, bios. <laughs> There we are. Welcome to a hawk with claws. Cool. That's a pretty good... I like that. That's a pretty good way to do it. Because the hands suddenly become feet. Do you wish to vault? But it called me overseer. That's interesting. Now, you notice that they're not giving me a chance to say yes or no because they want me to ask questions until it's a given conclusion. Even after Enkai begged us to answer the question and we heard that she might be eating, uh, getting eaten rather, Yeah, well, maybe we should stop being... This is a real problem. Where someone who risks their life... Uh, I don't like it when the... Uh, I'll talk about it later. Let's vault. Woohoo! This is easy for me to make the decision because I saved the game. <laughs> I've got clo cloned backup saves. Obviously, it would be a little bit more challenging for others, but I would like to... Um, uh, this, this whole sequence could have been a lot more touching. We'll talk about that after it happens, I think. I don't want to interrupt it because I'll just keep reversing my actions. Stories don't have tidy beginnings. The past is always present. But the past is just another story.
Man, the TARDIS sure is bigger on the inside. can always leave behind that would have been a really really astoundingly perfect theme if we wanted to leave a past behind which is really a problem because that whole ending doesn't really play to the strengths of the story at all um so the reason i was talking about how i didn't think they were likely to want to push the middle eastern theme any further is because those are the main core team here and um i don't see any signs that any of them aren't British. <laughs> anyway, uh, the ending of the game has thrown some um, some of the harsh words that are aimed at this game come from this ending. Uh, and I can understand why. And it's a problem with the thematic resonance. As with Mass Effect 3, the ending itself isn't the problem. It's how the ending fits with the rest of the story. In this case, we vaulted away and left the world behind. And we had also heard earlier that vault can mean to jump. So it was like, okay, well, that makes sense. But we, we had a real problem, a real disconnect. All of these themes are disconnected. The problem is vaulting away and leaving the world behind is 100% the perfect thematic ending for our character. We are someone who goes out into new places, leaves everyone behind, and searches for new things, new, new truths in ancient worlds, in missing places, in forgotten world, uh, forgotten areas. These are things that we do. And over the course of the game, we have played up a lot of that. We've played up a lot of things like our um, our interest in traveling the rivers, and we never see anyone else on the rivers because we're all traveling at the same speed. So even if we're on the same path we won't see each other uh, and are things like we're leaving people behind we don't have any interest in settling down all that stuff but it wasn't coherent driving towards an end where we warp away and leave the universe behind would have worked much better if we were actually going to feel that if if we were going to uh, for example during over the course of the game we never really leave something behind in a way that is painful we never we're never like oh yeah we're going to leave miari behind forever or oh yeah we're going to leave uh, you know these people behind we're just going to let them all die we leave things behind but we keep revisiting so every time we leave our home world we go back to it every time we leave Ajax, we go back to it it would have made a lot more sense if at some point over the course of the game we had to do something like choose whether we were going to permanently be exiled from Iox or permanently be exiled from our homeworld or something similar to that something that made it so that we understood that leaving can hurt and leaving can be forever similarly the stories of all of our lost and broken robots if we'd gotten more of that we could understand that things might be sacrificed as we leave a lot of the stories of our robots are stories of them sacrificing themselves for us to escape and that's another thing that theme that could have been explored. Us vaulting away could have been the primary theme, with the secondary theme of someone else sacrificing themselves to let us just get on with our stupid lives, our stupid pointless lives. If Enkai had lived through 2,000 years, and at the end, she was like, I'm going to, to end this 2,000-year-old existence. Everything I've seen, all the stars I've seen go dark in the course of my entire life i'm going to burn myself out i'm going to i'm going to destroy my myself and everything i've ever done just so that you can go on to another new world just so that you can go on to your next future and screw it up in the same way that you always screw up because that's life these are the sort of thematic things you could do with this ending yeah if you'd set it up right and that's that's the reason why I keep talking about context engines. Because as much as I'd like to say, oh, it's the writer's fault for, for not setting up the ending right, it's the context engine's fault. They're using a technique 
that doesn't allow them to control the context as well as they need to be able to control it. If you want to be able to punch those sorts of themes through, you have to be able to arrange them so their pacing rolls in at the right time, so that the player is prepped for the right thing at the right time. And I think that's possible. But this is one of the endings of the game. And it has been not quite 20 minutes. Let's see what lies past the ending. I hope you can't hear my noses. Uh, my nose is doing some gross stuff. What have we got? Just a hard reset, or is there a post credit sequence and a new game plus? Ooh, let's find out. Mm -hmm. So when I said that that was an ancient god, I was being serious. It's uh, obviously a inspired by Nin Herseg. My, my, my. A start plus. What lies in our new game plus? Who can say? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make some backup saves. Maybe try a different ending. And um, I will see you next episode. If you want to talk about the ending and your thoughts on it, feel free to do so below. Uh, we can also talk about the fact that a lot of this is... Uh, painfully pointless. Like... Our, our gravity manipulation with the with the um, ionic stones or whatever they're called iolite stones never came up um, the the great shipping routes of the ancient world the reason that the empires rose and fell none of it ever came up none of it ever mattered and if you want to talk about why your experience was the same or different or what you thought about it please do I'm very interested to hear about it and I'll see you in the next episode.